you can see that there's several half drunken bottles of wine. You're not too sure what type of, of, of <laughs> beverage it contains, but there's there's all kinds of you know mundane, yeah, mundane things lying around. Nothing of screams value. Okay, so how about one of the caravans or near one of the campsites, maybe a small pack that's off to the side, um, no one paying particular attention to it. Um, can I magic a symbol to appear on that object and change it slightly? Sure. What, what do you want to use on it? Sure, there's a, sure. There, I mean, on every, not, not every wagon, but several, you know, carts down, there's, there's several packs hanging off of the side. Okay. Traveling, um, traveling, traveling type of packs, people would probably have thrown over their shoulder. Sure. I want to try and convince uh, Zelos like to steal something from the pack. So I'm <laughs> going to go ahead and put a little symbol on the pack um, when he's not looking. Um, I can't think of anything lore-wise that would make it indicative that it's maybe a, a more expensive pack than than otherwise, just by putting a symbol on it. Maybe a house symbol, something that's familiar to people. So what what spell are you wanting to use it? Um, Prestidigitation, Ooh, Prestidigitation says I can make a color, a small mark, or a symbol appear on an object or a surface for one hour. I like that. It's a good idea. So I want to I, as a player, I don't know really what to put on there, but I'm sure my character would know what to put on there to try yeah. and uh, convince him. I mean, Zelos is right here with you. Maybe you guys can coordinate something out. Mark the pack with your, with your, with your magic, and uh, I'll use my thieving skills to find you something small and inconspicuous to have from that pack. Excellent. Then I do just that. All right. So this symbol, Misty, what type of symbol are you wanting to do? Are you wanting to do something that's that is the neon blue sign that says <laughs> beep, beep, with a big Please. arrow pointing down, or, or, or just something very light and you know something that just kind of blends in. Because I'm sure you guys probably coordinated what you're going to put on this pack. Something very well, inconspicuous. Inconspicuous. Something like a faded symbol, like so maybe you wouldn't have noticed it at first glance. Because I'm trying to convince Zelos he wants to steal from this pack. He he shouldn't know I've I put the mark on there. Ooh. So yeah, there's there's a about three wagons down. There's there's several traveling packs hanging off towards the back towards the back of the cart. There's there's several guards, probably about thirty feet thirty thirty ish feet away. So if you can imagine, there's there's a couple guards leaning up against a, a couple trees, and they're kind of talking. They're they're also seems like they're passing a pipe back and forth. You know, one of them real long corn cob pipes. Looks like they're they're practicing trying to, you know, make animals or or rings with the the smoke from their pipe as well. So you guys are kind of looking at each other like, hmm, I think we might be able to pull something off. I'll stand watch. I'm going to use my skill and stealth to mosey up towards that pack. Campfire is out at the beyond it. I think I'll just walk up to that wagon and get myself out of sight under it. All right. So why don't you give me a uh, dexterity check? And if you are proficient in stealth, you can add that proficiency, which I do believe that you're proficient in stealth. I think you're double proficient in stealth, aren't you? Because of your uh, your road class. Yes, feature. I am. Yeah. So go ahead and give me a, a D20, and we'll see how, how it works out for you. And then I will do uh, several... Ooh, very nice. So I'm going to do a couple couple things as well. Dave, I'll be right back. I'm okay, sorry, no the internet screwed up. Oh, no problem, man. All right, so oh, close. All 
right, so you're able to slink your way up to this to this cart. You've dodged. You've you know a couple people have kind of shifted as they're as they're sleeping at the campfires, and one guy says something something just you know ridiculous you couldn't even understand. Lets out a huge fart. And then he grabs his bottle of wine, his halfly drinking bottle of wine, sloshes one back, pours about a quarter of the bottle all over his face and his head, and then he just kind of, and then slams the bottle back down. A lot more of the wine comes out, and you're but you, you see this, the, the the guards don't notice that you're you're there as well, and you're right up against the side of this of this cart. You know, now it's it's definitely dark outside. There's there's also uh, trees cascading over the caravan as well because you're in a in a pretty forested area. And you have these these two packs that you can see. They're within your reach. As the symbol fades from the pack that was so designated, the pack nice itself job. disappears under that. Cart. Almost. In that pack, I find ah. A small unused eating knife and uh, I remove that slip it under my belt tie that pack back together and return it to its original spot I then make my way slowly but very quietly back to uh, Misty okay so as, as you as you hang the pack back up onto the hook on, on the side of the wagon uh, the the it actually latches onto your belt and it makes a noise and one of the guards turns around and says did you hear something and the other guard he's you know he's still trying to to make rings with the pipe so you're hiding you in the shadows scumbag. just I got your at name him. i got your ass but then after about right. 10 seconds or so the guard says ah it was nothing and then they go back to just talking and conversing with one another it's a close call but, uh, I was so poised to run up to them and use my wiles to distract, but it's good that I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Wolf Pumaria. Thank you. Welcome to the community. So yeah, you you make your way back to back to the fire. Nobody sees you. You are really, I mean, you you definitely use the shadows to your advantage, and you get back. Back at our own fire, we look at each other and. And I told Misty, well, we both have talents, do we not? I just smile at Zealus and say, well, you proved that to me tonight. Good well, job. So you took a knife, huh? Like a, you said you took it like a butter knife? <laughs> oh, a small eating knife. Most people in those days would have carried a, a three-inch blade, perhaps, with a four-inch handle. And uh, used that with their trencher to... Uh, Cut meat and vegetables, and actually is a fork. You little scumbag! I got your name! I got your name! Legs up at the two and say, having fun over there. Thank you, Ramonster 163. <laughs> you know what? Well, one thing that you notice about this this cutting knife, it's actually made of silver. Ooh. Thank you for the follow, Raymond. I told you it was shiny. Welcome to the community. And I just picked a pack at random. Well found. <laughs> I know you're a shit when I rolled that 19, right? <laughs> for, for, for the perception. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Okay, so while uh, while um, the great train robbers were uh, away, um, Rurak's gonna kind of. Well, it's finished. Um, sharpening the his axe, and he's going to kind of saddle over to the bard. Um, just kind of dump himself down next to the bard and say, um, "Where I come from, and we play the bagpipes, it's to inspire the the warriors of the clan. But um, I've never felt what I felt when you uh, played that tune earlier on. Uh, where, where have you, where have you, where have you found this magic from?" Uh, I guess I'll be training that, um, oh, geez, I always forget these names, training from, uh, one second. <laughs> training from Norwald's Bell Loyal. 
a lot of stuff that he taught me just from playing all these various musical instruments that you carry with me. And Normar was a troubadour, and he looked much like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, uh, so, can you play? You play any musical instrument then? And he kind of, he kind of digs in his pack and takes out a set of bagpipes. Oh boy, here we go. Ew, I forgot to write down the uh, uh, loot in my inventory. Oops. Oh, you 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 like that? You see those bagpipes? You've seen those, uh, but you you've never. Pl I don't think you've. You don't have that as a as a uh, musical no, instrument. I don't do you? No, I do not have a bagpipe with me. Mm. You're drooling over those bagpipes. <laughs> well, well you know, maybe if we continue our journey, I'll be able to teach you how to play the pipes. Nothing's oh, more inspirational than the wail, the scuttle of the pipes. <laughs> I love it. These guys. Oh, I will definitely. These guys are doing in excellent jobs on the RP. I love it. To, and add it to my repertoire of stuff. They are doing great. Music moves men's souls hard. We could use that to take us into battle. And this... Aye, and women too. This game is not rushed or anything. We are taking our time. I will gladly play this. a battle tune for when the time comes. Not rushing it, guys. All right, so you guys are talking for about another hour or so, and, and it seems like the guards switch posts again. And it seems like you, you, the group congregating there at your fire, and you're all about the only ones that are still up. It's probably about. I'm gonna say it's probably. Midnight-ish. I go to sleep, Dave. Of course, I go to sleep long before, uh, long before they uh, yeah. start trying to steal stuff. Well, I think yeah, because you <laughs> you 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 kept your weapons uh, unsheathed as well, right? Well, partially unsheathed. Gotcha. So, does anybody else want to do anything? Do I have any reason to feel uneasy about tonight, Dave? Uh, you can give me a... I'll let you give me an insight. Insight. Well, actually, uh, an intelligence check. Is, isn't uh, insight intelligence, I think? I think it's wisdom? Insight is wisdom. Is it wisdom? Give me an insight. Yeah, I have, the, I have it open right here. Thank you. True intentions and predicting moves and stuff. So, yeah, okay, I'll go ahead and roll that. So if you, yeah, just give me a wisdom. But if you have uh, if you have the the proficiency bonus, you can go ahead and add it for insight if you have it. I'm so fancy. That's a good song. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna send you a tell so we don't metagame that. Alrighty. And I'm gonna be doing this as well, guys. I'm gonna be sending a lot of tells during the game. So if I'm quiet. I'm probably going to be sending someone to tell. And it's sort of like passing notes around the table, but in a virtual setting, which is cool. All right. So... As far as I'm concerned, um, well, I'm not an elf, so I don't have any of that magical don't have to sleep BS, right? As a half elf? <laughs> uh, trans, I think. Yeah, you kind of put it in a meditated state for four hours. Yeah, but I'm a half elf, so I don't I don't have that magic, as far as I can recall. Um, I think Misty is going to settle down in her bedroll as well, probably close to the fire. Fire exactly comforts her. Um, I don't think she's ever truly at ease, especially on the road with a caravan full of men. But for the most part, I am going to be settling down for the night. Plus, I'm sure uh, I'm sure you could probably handle yourself as well. If some I just like to be ready. Mischievous traveler tried to uh, take advantage of the situation. I'm sure you could probably literally uh, put the fire out, so to speak, with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Men of burn for less. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
Okay, Dave. Uh, Rurax basically it's kind of kind of bit you know, unsettled. He's still not really that keen on going to sleep, so he's actually kind of going to do something that he would normally do when he was out on his own and just kind of have a almost do a perimeter of the camp just to walk around, just to kind of make sure that everything's all right. Okay. Um, just not just kind of casually, but he's kind of peering out into the darkness, he's got his um, dark vision and stuff, so he's just kind of making sure that everything's okay before he settles down for the night. Yeah, you got your 60 foot night vision goggles on, you don't see, <laughs> your Nemesh engineering goggles, you don't You don't see anything. Everything, you, know, you see some, you know, see a couple squirrels in the trees, you know, some birds flying overhead, nothing major. You got, what, 60 feet, and then you got... 60 feet a, a dim as well. Nah, yeah. Everything is everything is good. Okay, the guards all awake. Everybody, nobody's sleeping on the job. No, everybody's there. You know, it seems like the those trees over there, the, the guards have taken to that. It seems like they're over there drinking and, and actually smoking pipes over by the over by the trees. And once in a while, one walks over to the bush and you know pisses on a bush and comes back. Let me tell you one time we were fighting orcs and yeah, you know, just tales of past battles. Kind of keeps you up for a couple minutes, but you're able to nod off. Okay. And the Krivgar is <laughs> going to call it a night as well. So we have a the half elf takes one last look around with his dark vision, sees nothing alarming, turns in. All right. So morning comes. The rest of the night was uneventful. Everybody actually got a, a good five hours of sleep. So you guys are, you know, you guys are still all hit points, full hit points. Everyone has you know, all of their spells. But I'll tell you what, you guys had awesome role play. And I'm going to give each one of you a point of inspiration. And inspiration yeah. is a, it's a bonus. And it's, and you guys played your backgrounds. You guys put all of your backgrounds into it. Uh, you guys twisted your bonds, flaws, your traits, and your ideals. And I like that. So you guys did an excellent job last night. So everyone can have a point of inspiration. And this will last pretty much forever. But you cannot hoard inspiration points. And you guys, everyone knows what inspiration points do, right? Yes. Allows you to re-roll one bad roll. <laughs> Actually, let's take a let's take a look at that. Let's go to the player's handbook that we have. Our trusty player's handbook and roll twenty. And let's go to I believe it is in I believe it's an adventuring. Is it? Or maybe it's in. Nah, it's not there. It's in one of these. So anyways, I'm going to open up my player's handbook real quick, and we'll talk about inspiration real quick. <clears throat> I'm so fancy. Inspiration is actually really nice. I need to find the page number. Page 125 for you guys who have the PH PHB. And for those who don't, what chapter? Alright, so it looks like it's in the, uh, it's in backgrounds, it looks like. Alright, so you gain inspiration. This is when uh, I reward, reward you for the play of your personality traits or, you know, using your bonds and flaws. But hey, you know, I can give you, I can give you inspiration for, you know, doing well in a combat or pulling off some awesome maneuver or actually turning the chain or t changing the tide of, of maybe an encounter. So, I'll award you guys inspiration throughout, just not for you know, just not for role play, but for other things as well. 
even though it really doesn't talk about doing that. But, I mean, I, I want to reward the players, for, especially for good play. Uh, so when you use your inspiration, you can expend it when you make an attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. Spending your inspiration gives you advantage on that roll. So additionally, if you have inspiration, you can reward another player for good role playing, clever thinking, or simply doing something exciting in the game. So basically what you can do, you can give up as a player, you can give your inspiration to someone else as well, which is pretty cool. So and then it says when another player character does something that really contributes to the story in a fun and interesting way, you can give up your inspiration to give that character inspiration that you choose. I think that's that's really cool. So you can basically uh, take advantage on any role. It sort of works like a it's you know it's 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 a pretty nice little bonus for the players. I mean there are milestones in 4e, so inspiration is the the reward for 5e. All right, so the morning comes, everyone is starting to, you know, the, all of the campfires are starting to smolder, and everyone has, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people have broken out shovels and, you know, digging utensils and, and putting dirt, and everybody's pretty much taking care of the environment. They're practicing their eco-friendly uh, practices, I guess you could say. And the caravan starts to continue after about an hour. Everybody has a you know, very light breakfast for traveling. Because it is, it is pretty hot uh, during this season and, and on the Sword Coast. So as as the caravan starts to make its way towards its scumbag. final I destination, I got your ass. Uh, Vikronix, thank you for the follow. Uh, several of the the soldiers that are on horseback, they're riding from the front to the back, pretty much just announcing that uh, uh, pretty soon you will be making your final stop. Uh, you'll be picking up several more travelers before you reach the final day's destination uh, where the majority of the caravan will depart, which is in, which is in on. Uh, and this stop is greenest. And as you can see, I, I put it on the map where you guys were going. So as you guys travel for uh, several more hours, something starts to happen. You notice that... Well... For the past several days, you've been traveling this road that wane, uh, winds lazily across the rolling grasslands of the green fields. Uh, as the majority of the day goes by, it is now starting to become sunset, and the sundown is approaching when you top a rise and see the town of Greenest just a few short miles away. But instead of the pleasant and the pleasantries that the guards and everyone else were talking about, uh, you notice that you are seeing columns of black smoke rising from burning buildings. Shit. And you can see running figures that are actually a little more than dots in the distance. And there's also, as your eyes start to focus, you're, you're thinking, that, holy, is that really what, what you think you see? So you see a large wing shape wheeling low over the keep that rises above the center of the town. Now you know that Greenus is being attacked by a massive dragon. Can we tell what color it is? Not not currently where you're at. Now, where you're at, basically you're on top. It's sort of like the, the greenfields are, are like rolling hills. And you're basically on the top of a hill and you're fixing to, you know, descend down. It's not a steep hill. It's not a mountain or anything like that. It's sort of just like I said, rolling hills. You little so scumbag. as you're looking down this I got hill, your name. this is when you see the, the keep being attacked. Hippie King, thank you for the follow. Now you see this dragon. And after, I mean, everybody is just, I mean, the caravan has literally stopped in its tracks, no pun intended. And I mean, everybody is, oh, oh my God, look at that. That's a, that's a dragon. And that's only, only what stories talk about. So... Now, after, after about 30 seconds to a minute of this going on, you see that the dragon makes two circles of the keep. You know, th there's this town down below, and there's lots of burning buildings. 
Uh, there's also looks looks to be other things burning as well, maybe carts, maybe piles of hay. And in the center of this, well, near the center, there's this keep, sort of up on a hill. Well, after two more passes, this dragon notices the caravan. So all of a sudden, this dragon turns towards the caravan and is heading your way. Now the guards are all starting to, you know, several of the, the soldiers on horseback are, are starting to, you know, yell orders as, uh, get your bows, get your crossbows, we need to make a stand here. Uh, and now it's, it's starting to turn into utter chaos. Wagons are starting to, to take off. Uh, several horses have actually bucked and broken away. So now you have several turned over carts. I mean, th barrels are spilling. It's, it's actually, it's a chaotic scene now. And after about another 30 seconds or so, this dragon, and this thing as it's getting closer to the caravan, you can tell that this is definitely a blue dragon. And as it, and what solidifies this is as this dragon is swooping in towards the caravan, where you guys are at, you guys are towards the, the, the middle of the caravan. Now, the dragon, it comes up to the back of the caravan. It's, it, it makes a pass, and you can literally feel the wind coming off of its wings. It's flapping, and you can hear the, the, the grunts and the, the snores of it. And then this thing turns around, comes back, and just launches... It literally looks like a lightning storm coming out of its mouth. And this lightning storm is, uh, I would say, at least 80 feet long. And it just sprays about 40 feet of this caravan. And there are people that uh, basically die instantly. A lot of the guards, they, they you know let loose their arrows. They, a lot of the guards are throwing javelins and, and spears and but this dragon just literally wipes out liter almost the entire ass end of the caravan. And it looks like it's starting to turn around and it looks like it's starting to go towards the front of the caravan. And there are people literally screaming. And I mean, there's just chaos. There's death, there's destruction everywhere around you now. And this dragon again, 50 feet from you, sprays another, another lightning dragon breath and takes out the entire front of your caravan. And now there's just several wagons left in the middle. And by now, you know, everyone that, that is left in this area is all basically huddled under these, these last wagons. And there's a couple turned over. So you guys are hiding in turned over, you know, wagons. And there's several s horses are scattering everywhere. I mean, like I said, guys, this is, this is pure chaos. And then the dragon, as it makes its second pass and just sprays the entire front end of the caravan with lightning... It, it pretty much leaves the caravan alone, and it seems like it's heading back towards the keep. And you can see that it's flying around the keep several more times. Now what I want you guys to do is, is roll a, uh, I want you guys to roll a, a perception roll. Basically, I'm sorry, I want you to give me a wisdom uh, ability check, and if you are proficient in uh, perception, I want you guys to add that proficiency as well. So that's pretty much what 